All right, this lesson is about selection tools in Adobe Photoshop. So to get started, we're going to click on Photoshop and create a new document. So we're going to go File, New, and we're going to call this Robot. This is just a practice to get familiar with some of the different selection tools available. Um, so we're going to make sure it's 8.5 by 11 inches and we're going to change the resolution to 72. Resolution oftentimes will be at 300, but you want to make sure it's at 72 for this particular assignment because we're using images off the web, which will be a lower resolution at 72. Then we're going to change the background contents to transparent. You want to make sure you do that. That way you won't have a white background. It'll look more like a checkerboard. And then go ahead and hit OK. You should get a document something like this, and I'm going to drag the corner just out a bit so I've got a little bit of gray space. But today we're going to be using double documents, meaning I'll have a document over here and a document over here. I'll be sliding images from one side to the other. So the other document you should find on your desktop. If you don't have it, um, check with the teacher desk to get a copy of it. And I'm going to double click right here. It's called Robot Parts. Okay, so I'm going to slide it over and I'm going to pull this down as well so I have gray space here. Now let's just check out what we've got here before we do anything. Um, notice in layers you have a whole slew of images that are all in black and white. Notice the document here is grayscale and you have several different items to look at. If you close the eye of the particular layer you're on, you'll notice that the image will disappear temporarily. They're still there, they're just not showing. Okay. Also notice, if you click all of them, you lo it looks like you have a blank document. So hide every layer, and I want you to show the layer that says speakers. And I also want you to click on the speakers layer. It will turn blue to make sure you know you have it selected. Now in Photoshop, one of the best tools to move things around is called the move tool. And I always like to click my work and shake it so I know I'm on the right layer. For instance, if I'm on the driver layer and I'm trying to move this, it will not move because there's nothing I can select on that layer. So make sure you're on the speakers layer. You shook your speakers. And now one of the most important steps of this assignment is to click on show transform controls and auto select. Now these two buttons will only be showing up if you have your selection tool, your move tool, selected. This means that it's automatically going to click an item when you click on it, similar to Illustrator. And Show Transform Controls will give you the little bounding box so that you can make things smaller or bigger. Alright, so let's take a look at the selection tools we have in our toolbar. If you look over here in your toolbar, all of these selection tools are kind of right up here at the top. And the main ones we're going to work with today are the lasso tools. So when I click and hold on my lasso tool, I see a regular lasso that will just circle around things kind of freestyle. I've got a polygon lasso that makes straight lines, and I've got a magnetic lasso that actually hugs up against the edges of an object. So I have to think about which one would be the best choice when I'm selecting each item. So this item is very square, and it has only straight lines, so I think I'm going to choose the polygon lasso, because that makes straight lines to select. So I'm going to get that tool, and I'm going to come over here onto my speaker. I just want one of them. I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to slide it over to this document. We're going to turn these pieces into a kind of like a robot. So what I do is I click once on the corner, and then I click another time on this corner, Click back to here, basically just kind of stretching around each part of my item. Now this part seems kind of tricky, but what I do is I just go back where I started and you'll see a little circle pop up to tell you you're back where you started and then I click again. Now this is a selection. I call it marching ants sometimes because it looks like they're ants marching around your item. And when you do this, you want to make sure also that it says zero under feather. Feather is how um, faded out the edge of the selection is, and you want to make sure that says zero. 
All right, so to move it over, this is where a lot of people make a mistake. They think they can just move it over as is, but you have to go back to your move tool. And then if you click and drag, it will pull right over onto your other document. The copy stays over here, but you actually have a new one onto that side. Okay, just a quick word about troubleshooting. If you have a bad selection you don't like, to deselect, you just hit your command on your keyboard and D, command D to deselect. Sometimes when you start using these tools and you're not so sure how they work, you'll do something weird and don't know how to stop. So double click and command D to deselect. That will make it go away for you. Okay, let's go back to our new document now and let's click on our move tool. And remember your move tool will show your bounding box. And we're gonna do two things to this guy. We're gonna go to the corner, hold your shift key to make it constrained, shrink it about half of what it was. And whenever you shrink in Photoshop, you have to hit return at the end. If you don't hit return, nothing will let you move on until you hit return. So I'm also going to rotate this. To rotate it, I'm gonna hold down my shift key so it stays nice and straight. And then I also hit return again. Basically anytime you change anything, you hit return. Now this is gonna be the head of the robot. Um, two funky eyes here. I think this speaker makes a nice little head for my robot. You'll notice you have one new layer here. I'm not gonna label it right now, but if you were doing a, a big major project, you'd probably wanna label as you go. Okay, let's go back to our junk document. Remember, I already hit um, Command D to deselect. I call that junk document just because I usually call it that when I have all of my items ready to go and I'm selecting. It's just basically a pile of pictures. So I've got my working document and my pictures document. All right, so let's go to a new item. This time we're going to go to the microphone. So hide your speakers, show your microphone, and then click on the microphone layer. Get your move tool and shake it around so you know you're on the right layer. Okay, now this one is gonna be different. These are not only straight edges. This part might be the trickiest way to select. And notice a lot of people might say, well, what about the magic wand? I know the magic wand just clicks random areas. And we could do that, but notice that we'd have to change our tolerance quite a bit, try to figure it out ourselves. So we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna go Command D to deselect. We're gonna do something different. We're gonna start with the same tool we had, but I'm gonna show you a way you can use straight lines and then toggle. What toggling means is you switch tools in the process. You're gonna to toggle between the straight polygon lasso and the regular lasso. So watch how I do this. I'm gonna start at the top where it's pretty straight, straight, straight. I'm gonna even go straight right down here. And then I'm gonna hold Option and click and drag all at the same time. And you'll notice that your tool turns into a regular lasso, which will let you curve around whatever you want. Then I'm gonna go straight down again. Option, click and drag. Straight and straight and straight. Option, click and drag and straight up, up, option, click and drag around this little tiny piece. And then I'm gonna finish it off by just connecting back where I started. So now I've got my little marching ants. I don't drag it right now because they don't have my move tool. So get your move tool and drag your microphone over, okay? Now again, if you're going halfway through it and you get confused, you're going like this, Option, you're lost, you're stuck, double click, Command D to deselect and start over again. Okay, so back where we are, we're building our robot now. So this is gonna become the robot's body. So first thing, let's shrink it a bit. Shift, shrink, hit return when you're done and then rotate. I like to put this upside down. I think it makes a nice little body for the robot. It even has a neck here. Okay, now right away, you might wanna go, well, I want his head in front of his neck. So the nice thing about layers is you can click on one layer and just drag it behind. Now what I have is the head on top and the body and the neck behind. Okay, 
Moving on, we're going to go back to our document. We're going to hide the microphone layer and we're going to show the driver layer. Okay, now finally we're to a really easy selection. Make sure you shake it with your move tool so you know you're on the right layer. And we're going to, with this one, notice it's all white in the background. We love the all white because it's really easy to make that selection. All I do is I get my magic wand tool. Notice that there are two options. There's quick selection, which is also a great selection tool, but we're gonna just use magic wand today. We're gonna click on the white space and simply hit delete on your keyboard. Now you're all ready to move this little guy over. This is gonna become a hat. It's a perfect little hat shape. So I'm gonna get the move tool and pull this across, drop it off on top. Notice it's really big. Not really useful yet. Make sure you've got these two boxes checked or you won't see your um, bounding box to constrain. So let's hold shift and make it smaller. Hit return, rotate the hat, return again. Now I'm gonna put it right on top of his head, but we probably want to send it to the back because all these photos together, we'll have to figure out which arrangement they go in. So I'm going to at least pull it behind the speaker. And it just kind of sits right on top of his head there. Now some people really want to get fancy right away and figure out how they can tilt it a bit and things like that. We're just going to set it on top for now. If you want to rotate it a little bit, just kind of pop in right behind his head. Um, you can do that. And if you re decide you want to make any of the other items smaller, like I think his head might be a bit too big, shrink, return. Just remember that every time you make an adjustment, you hit return at the end. It's kind of a nice feature when you get used to it. Okay, we're getting there. We're going to get some arms and some legs, and then I'm going to let you finish it off however you can using every item on this document in some way. So back to this side. Now we do have a selection here. We want to deselect, so remember to deselect. Command D on your keyboard. Now nothing is selected. Okay, I'm going to hide this layer. And for some arms, I think I'm going to start with a hammer. So let's just go to the hammer layer. Show the hammer. Now again, this is a pretty easy one to select. Actually, I think this is a chocolate hammer, which is kind of funny because I was looking for tools. But let's get this um, magic wand again. This is review, just what you did before. And click delete and get your move tool and slide that hammer over. Okay, now to make arms out of this hammer, I'm gonna shift drag, hit return, and rotate. I think that that top of the hammer makes a nice little shoulder, I guess. I'm trying to be creative here as we learn selection tools. So let's make that a shoulder. And let's also, this time, not hold the shift key and squish it a bit to make them shorter Okay, and hit return. Now I'm just going to option drag and put another hammer, just like option drag in any Adobe program will copy. And I'm gonna put this one over here. So this is the top part of the arm. I might do another object for the hands for now. Now, a lot of people really like symmetry. They want things to match from side to side. To make this flip so it's matching this hammer, you would go edit, transform, flip horizontal. Now let me rotate that back where I wanted it and now you'll notice I have a mirror image and hit return. Okay so we got some little short arms here. Let's go back and see what we can find next. I'm going to hide this layer and hmm, let's see let's make his legs out of chainsaws. Okay so I'm going to click on the chainsaw and notice the hammer is still selected, and that's going to bother me till I go Command D to deselect. Now I'm going to click on the chainsaw layer, shake the chainsaw to make sure I've got it, and let's look at this guy. This one is uh, easy selection because it's all white, but it has these goggles on it. We may or may not want those goggles, so I'm going to show you a little trick to get rid of those when we make our selection. So first thing, let's just review, click the white, hit delete probably want to get rid of this white too. Command D to deselect. And I'm going to bring this little chainsaw over and shrink it way down. 
kind of like the chainsaw because it ends up looking like hips when you put the chainsaw on the two sides. Now you have to really be a kind of creative thinker here because I know this is strange to make all these tools look like a robot, but we'll teach you a lot about Photoshop. So I duplicated this and I'm going to actually go back to edit, transform, flip horizontal, and now I've got my two legs. Okay, now what's happening here is I'm running out of space. My entire robot is huge and I wanna make feet and put things in his hands and all kinds of things. So I need to shrink the whole package here. And to select everything together, what I do is come over to my layers and I click on the top layer, hold my shift key and click on the bottom layer so they're all selected. Now I can go to the corner shift and drag when I'm done hit return and now I've got lots more space to work with. To undeselect I just go to whatever layer I want it to be on. So now I'm going to make those legs a little smaller and then move them down a bit and move them down a bit. Now what I was saying about those goggles they're not really bothering me too much but since they're on their own layer I could actually just get my eraser tool just kind of clean up that edge, just kind of take off the section of goggle. Oops, notice this one's not working because I'm not on that layer. So if you're ever stuck, oh funny, chainsaw is spelled incorrectly on this, I just noticed as well. If you ever notice something's not working for you, check your layers and also make sure you go Command D to deselect because if you have a little tiny selection, for instance, if I have a selection right here, and I'm trying to do something out here, Photoshop will not do anything except inside this one selection. So troubleshooting again, Command D to deselect wherever you can. Okay, let's just go back here and see what else we can muster up with our images here. Um, I'm gonna look at some different items and see. I think I'm gonna make some hands out of these nuts and bolts. So let's hide the chainsaw on the nuts and bolts. Let's get our move tool. Oops, I, if you ever click right in the center there, um, sometimes it wants you to rotate, so you have to hit return. So I've got nuts and bolts here, and this one, we've been using the magic wand. This one is um, going to select the white, but we actually only want one of the nuts and bolts. So what I'm going to do, I could do this many, many different ways, um, but what I'm going to do is delete the background, and now I'm going to get my regular lasso tool and I'm just going to choose the one that I want, which is this one right here. I'm just going to circle around it. Don't even have to go right on the edge because watch what happens when I get my move tool and I pull this over. Okay, so now I've got nuts and bolts. I'm going to make this the bottom part of his hand. So I'm going to just kind of make him have an elbow joint type thing here. And you do not have to make your robot look like mine. You might have a completely different creative way of doing it. The whole point of this assignment is just to get comfortable cutting pictures apart and putting them back together. Okay, so there's the hands. I'm done with the nuts and bolts, so I command D to deselect. And I did want to show you how to select um, Let's do one more of those, review one thing at a time. So I'm going to show the plugs, go back up here and hide the nuts and bolts. Um, let's make these plugs into feet. So I'm going to move this over. And same thing, if I want just one of these plugs, I'm going to first get rid of the white space, Command D to deselect, and just circle around one. If I bring them both over together, it could work. I could erase them separately but I'm gonna bring one over. Now notice I made a little mistake there. That'll be easy to fix once I get it to the document. So always make sure you switch to your move tool and I'm gonna pull this guy over. Hmm, this would be interesting maybe if he's holding something too. So you're required to use all the pieces in here so you gotta get creative with how you use them. And I love to see how people approach that. So now I'm just going to get my eraser tool and I have a little piece there to get rid of. And I also want to put that layer on top of my chainsaw. Now see how this is getting confusing over here? 
it's hard for me to see which is which, and it's hard for me to know what I'm on. So that's why we usually label each layer. So I want to put this on top, and then I'll make, make that into a foot here. I might even erase the back end of this plug so I just have more of a little foot shape like that. And then I'm going to option drag over here, and then I will rotate this direction. Hit return. All right, so you guys are on your own here. Now have fun with it, Mandy. Um, there's a trombone. Um, we've used the speakers, driver, um, hammer, and chainsaw. There's a drill, so he could be holding the drill, or you can make the drill into boots for his shoes. There's a really awesome old school Nokia phone he could be talking on if you'd like. And I think that might be about it. So go, oh, and a CD. So see if you can figure out how to get that CD over there. Maybe you could make it into his mouth or put CD glasses on him. Um, when you're done, save the robot. Our next lesson is going to be how to add a background, an interesting background for your robot project.